welcome to using Creo. What we're going to do is continue on with this version folio clock and start creating some frame elements for this and possibly even get into a little weight that we can throw onto the top of this guy here. So to get started, we're just going to create a work plane and we want to make the work plane on a face. Now, you remember in one of the previous episodes, I had rotated some of these gears and you'll notice when I create the plane, it actually orients itself according to the orientation or the rotation I did here. Now this can be a bit of a problem. Let's say I want to throw in a crosshairs on here and you'll notice that the crosshair now is at that angle as well. So instead of trying to reorient everything and make sure that everything is going the way I want it to, I can grab different uh, geometry for the work plane on the face and I'll do this one. That way I have everything squared up the way I want it to be. Now, um, one thing I also want to do here is I want to create a new part and I'll call this one frame. And I'm also going to want to make sure that it is active. And the reason why I want to make it active is, is that when we created this plane, we clicked on the geometry of this guy here. Um, and with this, the problem with that is, is that it will assume that any extrusions or pulls that we do are based off of this part and not the new frame that we want it to be. The other thing that I want to do here is that this plane, I want to actually have um, a bit of a gap between it and the geometry and everything that I have here. So what we can do is we can just select on the plane and in here you have position work plane that just shows up when you select on it. And we can pull him away just a little ways from the part. So we'll go five and we'll hit the middle mouse button and get out of that. So now we've got a plane that's out just a little ways. So let's reorient this guy. There we go. We'll zoom in. Now, the some of this stuff, I want to be able to see some of this geometry, but I find it kind of confusing when I'm doing the frame. So it'd be really nice if I just had sort of like, where is this axle? Uh, where is this axle? And where is this shaft? So that I can basically make the frame. And this is one of those things where you can use this project now you can project construction geometry or you can project regular geometry based off of a face or a 3D edge. In this case, I'm just going to grab that face, I'm going to grab this face, I'm going to grab this guy, and that way I have some pretty good ideas of what's going on. So you can't really see what happened here, but let's just hide some of these guys here. And you can see the geometry that was left behind so that I can start basing the frame off of that. So now we've gotten this geometry, I know that I'm going to need a spot here for the axle. We're going to modify this pendulum shaft here in a bit, but uh, we need a space for the axle to come through here and here. And I also want it to be something of a, of a curvy shape. So first thing I'm going to do here in this case is, is I'm just going to start drawing some lines and um, you can come in and draw lines based off of all this stuff. But even if you just use the standard line and arc, I'm going to just get some foundational uh, geometry that I can use here. So I'm going to go like this. kind of want it to be triangular, but at the same time I want to have some curvy stuff involved in this. So I'm going to just kind of, by guess by golly, draw a little bit of a, an odd triangle here. And that looks pretty good. So something that I can do in this case is, is that I can convert this geometry to construction geometry after I clicked on that. And how I did that was is I clicked on the line and you can see that this convert geo shows up and that will allow me to toggle it on and off until I hit exit and get out of the command. You'll notice the little scroll beside the cursor. I can hit here, exit out of that or hit escape. Now, what I'm going to do for this is, is I'm going to use a spline and I'll start here. And like I said, I want to make it kind of curvy and interesting. So one thing I want to do is, is make sure I capture that top. Um, axle, but at the same time, I want to kind of maybe arc over and get some of that other axle here. Let's just try that again here. Wasn't too happy with how I drew that one out. So we'll go like this, this, and hit down here, and then we'll hit OK. So I've got a little bit of a curve happening there. Top line, I think I can accept the way it is. So in this case, I'm just going to select on it and I'm going to convert that back. And we'll create another spline here just to fancy some things up a little bit. Maybe go like that. And I'm going to hit the middle mouse button to, to select it. Now, 
One of the things I want to do is also have this so it's a little bit of a hollow uh, so you can see all the gears and the mechanism and how everything works within the clock. So what I want to do is I want to make an equidistant contour offset. Now this is one of those things where it gets kind of interesting because it, it, this isn't a very intuitive command. Now right here as it is it's not really letting me select any geometry. If I hold down shift though however it will. And then you start clicking around while you're doing this and then you see that line and you start to offset and you go well wait a minute I wanted to do this entire contour how come it's breaking things up you know if I hit the middle mouse button that's definitely not what I wanted to have happen now we'll go into the more more of the details of how, what that is doing and why but in the meantime just to get everybody going is deselect this intersection now come in here select on this guy select on this guy and you'll start noticing that I can start moving some of this geometry around now I still kinda get some of that equidistance issues so I'm gonna make sure that I ignore both of these now now let's take a look at what happens now the whole contour is selected and I can offset it just the way I wanted to in the first place so let's go to 15 that looks pretty good and we can take that as part of the the geometry that we're gonna be using for this one thing I do notice here is that I want to be able to have an axle right here um, but the problem with that is, well, let's just uh, get this view into a better position. Problem with that is, is that center of axle will come in here. So I kind of need to create a fillet in here. Now I can come in and create a radius um, using some of the 2D sketching um, functions that you have here. But generally I like working in the 3D, maybe create the fillet that way. Um, and the other thing that I notice here is that I might need to have this guy drop down a little further or make sure that he clears this because I'm going to be running some frame elements or post from here to the to the back side and I'll show you that here in a moment but what how about we just jump into this I'm gonna make sure that I have this set as active that frame and from here we're just gonna extrude this guy out a little bit and see how far we got 11 how about we just do a 10 that should be good and we'll accept that now let's take a look at how it looks with the rest of these elements in here so now we've got that frame element that's kind of sticking out a little bit it's pretty curvy but we still need to do a couple of things first thing that I want I was mentioning before is, is I'm not very happy with how that kind of works out there so let's just put a radius in there for and that looks pretty good so now that we have that radius we might want to consider ra putting radii up on some of these others I'm not too convinced that it would be totally necessary. So now we have this, all this geometry, it looks pretty good. And to save ourselves having to recreate some of this stuff over again is that I can take this sketch, this sketch plane and I can move it to the backside and do an extrusion. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to be creating a, another sketch, another sketch on another plane. And from there, I'm just going to create those bar elements that basically will hold this frame together or sandwich everything in between and I got to make sure that when I'm doing that I'm not interfering with some of these gears so first thing I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna go back to hide everything and I can just start deleting some of these uh, 2d elements in here and you can come in and box select stuff to get rid of the 2d elements if you really want to just like that so now we're just right back to a nice clean slate with that uh, with that plane so now what I want to do is create some posts that I can use for basically joining these frames together so you can see from here I drew a circle but it disappeared and the reason why is it was on the back side if you're going through solid geometry you can't see the sketch and that can be a little bit of a problem but yeah for the most part just come in and check things out now one thing I'm doing here is, is that I want to draw another circle I'm still in the circle command but I also want it to be horizontal from this one now if I hold down shift you'll notice that I can come across and have that inference as far as the horizontal goes and create a second circle here I can't remember what I had for the radius on this guy but the other one there was 5 so let's make that a radius 5 so we have everything equal and we'll create a last one down here and I got out of the circle command when I was modifying it so let's just come up into here 
and go to five. I'm gonna have to zoom in so that I have that finesse to be able to get a five. And now that I have this in here, let's just show some of this geometry. You'll notice that I'm toggling stuff on and off, but it is a little handier to be able to come in and do this uh, that way. Um, in this case, we're still working in that frame and I wanna pull these pins out so that they clear the back side of this. Now you'll notice that this is obviously these pins are not going to work the way they are. The reason why I say that is is that this will come through this gear here. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. I know I'm going to have to come back and maybe extend some of this geometry and move this part around a little bit or, or this pin down. But in the meantime, while I'm in the sort of creative mode that I am, I'm just going to kind of live with it and keep moving along. So I'm going to grab that that um, plane, I'm going to hit position the work plane, and from here I'm going to hold down shift and pull out, and you'll notice as soon as I got to the to the ends of those pins, it dropped the plane right there on the top of that. Now remember that one little trick that I was showing you earlier on the project? So let's go on to the project, and we're not going to project construction geometry, we're going to project geometry this time, and I'm going to choose that face. And now I have a perfect outline of that face the way I need it, including those pins though. And I don't want those pins, but that's just a simple matter of coming in and, and deleting the 3D. Originally those circles were still there on the, uh, on the sketch, so it kind of did a double copy. But it's very easy to get rid of that. And then we're going to do another pull. And we knew that we pulled that last one 10 before. And we'll hit that, and it looks like we're pretty good. At this point, I'm going to select that plane. I'm just going to delete it out. You see that we're still active within that frame element. And we've got something that looks pretty decent as far as uh, the geometry and everything goes here. So let's just uh, create a good view here. Let's zoom in. So now we've got that frame element. We know that we have to move that one post. But for the most part, we've got something that we can work with. In fact, we've got to move all these posts. Um, one thing I can see really quickly that I can do very easily here is I'm going to select that one post there. Let's just zoom out. And I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select that other post. I'm going to select this face, this face. And I'm going to come underneath because I want this offset distance to be the same. Select that face there and this face there. And from this, once I hit the middle mouse button, it gives me an arrow, and what I can do is go, hey, I want all that geometry to move up just a little bit, and you'll notice that when I do that, one thing that was kind of nice is it extended out these arcs that I had made uh, originally with, with the sketch, so it started, it kept some of the, the conceptual stuff that I wanted to keep. Um, right within the sketch, or within the model, and I didn't have to create a new sketch or, or modify anything too much. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to come into here on the part and I'm going to change its color. And down here, it's just off the screen, it says part properties, come into appearance, and then the base color. Uh, so we have red and green and yellow. We can go for cyan just to kind of give it a different look just so that I have the everything kind of worked out in my head as to what part is belonging to what. So just like I had said is I'm going to create a weight and we're just going to use some of the techniques that we did before again is that we're going to create a face or we're going to create a sketch. Um, and in this case, this is one of those things that, that you can do instead of trying to create a work plane on a face. Sometimes what I will do is I'll create the work plane and I'll hit sketch and it creates the work plane right on that face but it also makes the escapement the active part. And that's not necessarily what I want to have happen, but in the meantime, I can still do some of the sketching. And I'm going to project that face. You'll notice when I hit project, the face was still selected, so I got that. And then we're going to do an equidistance. Again, I'm going to deselect some of this stuff so that it doesn't cause me any issues as far as the offset goes. And we'll go like, uh, we'll go to two here. So we've got that. Now I'm just creating a slider for this. Um, in this case, what I actually wanted to do here is create a new part that we're going to call weight. And we're going to make sure that he's the active part. So we're going to set him as active. 
And at this point, we're going to do a quick pull along this edge here. So now we've got the, the start of a part. Now you might be wondering, like I can't slide this and, and engage it in these notches the way I have it, and you're right in that sense. So here, let's just grab that plane. I'm gonna delete him out. We're right within that weight for doing everything that we need to. So I'm gonna start hiding some of the other parts that we don't necessarily need to see. And in this case, um, again, using the pull functions is where I really like to have things done is that we go into there, grab those two faces, and now I can offset both of those. Let's take this down to four. And now I've got a rectangle the way I want. Now, I also want this to be a little stylized. And one of the things trying to stylize this it would be to add some points. And this is one thing I thought was quite fun. is I can select on a face and we can imprint a line. So the imprint align doesn't really have any really good snaps as far as snapping to other geometries. So we're going to create some construction geometry that we can snap to. Now we will make a vertical line. Whoops. So we have to create a work plane. In this case, what I can do is I can say create a circle on there, creates a work plane, and I can hit escape and it takes me out of that. And now I can create uh, some, some of the geometry that I want to here. So let's just get in here and We'll make a vertical line right about there. So now that we have that, is that come to the imprint, you can do a linear imprint, a line imprint, um, an intersection, a whole bunch of other things. In this case, we're just gonna use imprint a line, and let's just start selecting a couple of spots here. I'm not sure exactly why it's not letting me do it. Okay, there we go. I didn't uh, select the face on which I wanted to imprint first, so I have to hit that. Then I'm going to grab onto this construction geometry. And you'll notice that now I have two faces. So let's just delete that face or that uh, plane away. And now I have this, this guy here, this line. So what can we do with this line that would be kind of interesting? Well, we can modify it and we can stretch. And that was the stretch face. That's not the one we wanted to use. We want to use the stretch edge. We're going to grab that edge. And now what I can do is I can do this and create a, a bottom peak on this, a bottom peak. I don't know if you'd really want to call it a peak, but uh, you know, some geometry that uh, starts playing with those edges. And maybe I want to do the same to the top, this top edge here. So again, you know, make sure that you can come in and do some construction geometry if you really want to. But in this case, I'm just going to kind of go with grabbing that face and we'll put it right about the middle. One thing actually, this was this might turn out to be kind of interesting. Let's take an imprint on this face and let's do a line from there to there. So now we've got a really interesting angle. Now this might not be something that I'm going to keep, but it is something that uh, we can play with to show uh, some of the functionality that you can use. So we can pull this guy up. I'll hit enter or hit the middle mouse button and you can see that I created an interesting twist and it kind of twisted up this face as well. This face is no longer a flat. It's actually got a little bit of a, a twist to it and uh, could make some very interesting stylized elements out of that. So in the meantime, we've got the roughed out weight in here. Uh, we're going to come in and start stealing some of the geometry of this so we can move the weight around. And we've also got a frame that we can use. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to zoom in on this guy here. And we're going to leave that. One of the things that we're going to cover next week is obviously this pendulum is going to need to come out a little further, some of these arms. So I'm going to show how to modify that geometry. We're going to uh, modify this weight a little bit so that it is um, potentially a little less stylized and then um, start stretching some of this geometry around so that we can have the rest of the clock done. At that point, it's just going to be running some axles and uh, hopefully we can do some simulations of this and maybe even get one of these bad boys built. In the meantime, hopefully that's helped you out, and I'll chat with you guys next week.